good afternoon in this lecture we shall discuss about panel data analysis panel data models include common effect model fixed effect model and random effect model so before i uh, discuss each of the panel data models with you separately i would like to summarize the types of data there are basically three types of data first type is cross sectional data cross sectional data is data in which time varies but cross sectional unit remains fixed for example data of 20 firms of year 2023 now here year is 1 that is 2023 and number of firms are 20 so this will be known as cross sectional data and its equation is written with the subscripts i with the dependent variable as well as with the independent variable then the second type is time series data in time series data we have one cross sectional unit but year change for example if we have a data of one firm from 2001 to 2023 this will be known as time series data Another example of time series data is GDP of Pakistan from 2001 to 2023. The years are 23 while the country is 1. So we will call it time series data. When its equation is written, subscript P is written with the dependent variable as well as with the independent variable. So these subscripts indicate that whether it is cross sectional time series or panel data. The third type is panel data, which is also known as pool data. Here we have more than one cross sectional unit as well as we have more than one year. For example, if we collect data of 20 firms from 2001 to 2013, this will be known as panel data because number of firms are more than one. Similarly, the number of years are more than one. When its equation is written, we write id these two subscripts are written with the dependent variable as well as with the independent variable where i refers to the cross sectional unit which may be an individual a firm a country or even uh, a continent and t refer to the time period which can be a day week month or year Now, let, let's uh, discuss about panel data. These are the models that combine cross section as a time series data. In panel data, the same cross sectional unit, which may be industry, firm, or a country, is surveyed over time. So, we have data which is pooled over space as well as time. And in simple words, if we have data of more than one cross sectional unit, for a period of more than one, it will be known as panel data. Now, in this slide, next few slides, we shall discuss that what are the reasons that we use panel data instead of cross-sectional and time series data. The first reason is that panel data can take explicit account of individual specific heterogeneity. Second, by combining data in two dimension, panel data gives more data variation, less collinearity, and more degrees of freedom. Degree of freedom is n minus k minus 1, which is basically number of observation access to the number of estimates to be estimated. Because in panel data, we combine the data of different cross sectional unit and measured over different years therefore normally we have more number of observation and whenever we'll be having more number of observation degree of freedom will be high third reason is that panel data is better suited than cross-sectional data for studying the dynamics of change for example it is well suited to understand the bankruptcy or merger etc fourth reason of preferring panel data over cross-sectional time series is that panel data is better at detecting and measuring effects that cannot be observed in either cross-section or time series data. Because in time series we measure the data of one cross-sectional unit only, 
However, in cross sectional data, we measure the data over only a one point of time. Therefore, uh, it is better to use panel data in which we have more cross sectional unit and more number of years, uh, and it is better at detecting and measuring the effect. Fifth reason of preferring panel data is that panel data enables the study of more complex behavioral models, for example, the effects of technological change or economic cycle. And sixth reason is that panel data can minimize the effects of aggregation bias from aggregating firms into broad groups. Now, in the panel data, we can assume different things. For example, we can assume that intercept and slope coefficients are constant across time in firms. Or we can assume slope coefficient is constant, but the intercept varies over firms. Or we can assume the slope coefficient is constant, but the intercept varies over firms and over time. So these are five different possible assumptions of panel data analysis. Now the first model of panel data analysis is a common effect model. There are basically uh, three main models which are used under panel data analysis. Common effect model, fixed effect model, and random effect model. Let's discuss about common effect model. Common effect model is nothing more than just the application of OLS on panel data. So basically, this is a common effect, and I should have written here the common word common zero common. So if we apply OLS on a panel data, then that is known as common effects model. Why it is called common? Because it assumes that intercept as well as slopes are common across the all cross sectional unit as well as across all the year. So this is the reason of assigning this term common. It assumes that intercept and slope remain same across cross sectional units as well as over time. Need to see do we really need to run fixed effect model and use too many dummy variables or not. So it is important to run common effect model first and then uh, compare run the fixed effect model and compare the common effect model with the fixed effect model. So before uh, I, I show you how to run this um, model in the e-views, I will tell you about this basic equation which we shall discuss in the e-views. Here, dependent variable is uh, you can this equation dependent variable is excess return and uh, independent variable is beta so basically this is one version of testing the capital asset pricing model this beta belongs to the portfolio into which a particular stock has been assigned on the basis of size and dependent variable is excess return which is in the stock return of an individual company minus risk free rate. And if CAPM holds, then this uh, intercept beta naught should not be statistically different from zero. And this beta one should be equal to approximately market risk premium. So, because we have here uh, two subscript, I indicates the stock and T indicates the number of years. Similarly, in independent variable, we have I, which refers to the individual stock, and T refers to the year, and this is a panel data. So let's go to the e views now. So let me start from the scratch. Uh, please remember that the important thing about E views and to run the panel data in the e views is that first of all we need to tell the e views we need to organize the data we need to create the relevant work file in the e views so that software can recognize 
that we are going to run panel data analysis and then it can run the relevant techniques so first of all see your data in microsoft excel uh, this is access return data which is our dependent variable this is independent variable which is beta of the portfolio to which that particular stock is assigned is categorized and this is years so we have data from 1996 to 2006 so it consists of 11 years and this is firm identity so we have total number of firms 2500 so the total number of firms are 2500 which are our cross sectional unit and the total number of years are 11 so first of all we create uh, a relevant work file of panel data in e views so in the command window create create press enter here it asks you to select the work file structure if you click on this button you will see three different types of structure this is the first one is for fixed uh, sorry uh, this is for cross sectional data the second one is for time series data and this is balanced panel for panel data so we will select here balanced panel our frequency is annual our start date is 1996 our end date is 2006 and our number of cross sections are 2000 500 so when we click ok a work file is created here now on the next step we shall import data from our excel file into the eviews file so let's go to file import import from file and go to the folder where that data is stored let's say it is stored here in desktop courses fp uh, minus excel data file so you will go where that, that data is stored so here this is panel data so i'll open it i'll click on the finish Now the data has been imported here. You can open a file and see this is return data and this is uh, data of our independent variable beta. One thing which you can note here that in a views data is stacked by forms which means that we have data of form 1 for all the uh, 11 year then we have the data of second form for all the 11 years however in excel data is uh, stacked by year first we have the uh, data of 1996 for all the 2500 firm and then the years change so in excel this data is stacked by year while in a views data should have been stacked by cross sectional unit therefore in a views we shall change the structure by double clicking on this range we double click here to open the work file structure here under cross section id we shall type form underscore ident and in date series we shall type year we'll click okay and this structure is also recognize our panel data now in the next step we shall run 
or start from common effect mode. To run the common effect model, go to the command window and type here estimate. Press enter. Here type the equation. Return base C base theta. Here we you we do not need to select any option un, under any other tab. We will just click OK. So this is the result of common effect model. Here we see that the coefficient of beta is positive and it is statistically insignificant and the intercept is also statistically insignificant and if we want to interpret these values then we can see that uh, this 0 0.0018 is because this is monthly data so we uh, can do their uh, interpretation uh, like uh, here let me see here that We can see that uh, now I am going to interpret this uh, intercept 0 0.001843 and this 0 0.004543. Their interpretation is written here. Neither the intercept nor the slope is statistically significant because p value of both intercept as well as the coefficient are less than 2. Therefore, we can say that both the intercept as well as slope are not statistically significant and the returns are in this proportion term rather than percentage so the slope estimate of 0 0.0041 correspond to a risk premium of 0 0.045 percent per month or around 0 0.5 percent per year whereas the excess return for all firms in the sample is around minus two percent per year so if we go back to the EVs, you will see that this 0 0.0018 is monthly. When we multiply it with 12, the answer will be equal to around 2. So we will interpret it like this that the excess return for all for the sample is around minus 2% per year. And uh, then we uh, will run now fixed effect model. To run the fixed effect model, first of all, you know that what is the need. Basically, in common effect model, we assume that this intercept of 0 0.001843 as well as the slope of 0 0.004454 remain same across all the cross-sectional units, which are 2500 in this data, and these two intercept as well as slope also remain same or remain common common across all the years which are total 11 so all the 11 years share common intercept and common slope similarly all the 2500 firms have the common intercept and common slope therefore we call this model as common effect model but as you know that this is very innocent assumption that the relationship between beta and excess returns remained same from 1996 to 2006 and also it is very innocent assumption that this relationship remains same across all the 2500 firms irrespective of their size their leverage their industry etc so we need to use the fixed effect model to capture the heterogeneity existing over the year as well as existing over the cross-sectional unit to run the fixed effect model we need to click on the estimate here and here we will see the we will click the panel option in effect specification we shall select here cross-section fixed and then period effect so what does it mean it means that we are asking or we are uh, giving the command to e views 
to run a model where every uh, cross sectional where intercept is fixed across each cross sectional unit and it is also fixed over time and we click ok we will see here the output of fixed effect model in fixed effect model we have seen that both intercept as well as slope have become statistically significant as t statistics of 3.49 and 2.98 are higher than our threshold or rule of thumb value 2 and the sign of this coefficient has also become negative now this is the output of fixed effect model here we will see that uh, beat if if a, if a portfolio has a higher beta the excess return of that particular stock will be negative will be less because it is its value is minus 0 0.0118 now if you want to see the fixed effect of cross sectional units or fixed effect of year go to the view click on fixed random effects and here you can click on cross section effects now these are the effects of all the 2500 firms and if you want to see the uh, fixed effect of year then again go to view select fixed random effects go to period effects and you will see the intercept of each year under this column effect so this in this way we can see the fixed effect of each year as well as fixed effect of each cross sectional unit which in our case is a firm now we have to decide that whether we should go for common effect model or we should run fixed effect model please remember that this decision is made on the basis of redundant fixed effect likelihood test and we shall run the redundant fixed effect likelihood test on a window showing us the output of fixed effect model the output of redundant fixed effect likelihood test will tell us uh, in simple words that whether the fixed effect model is better than common effect model or common effect model is better than the fixed effect model so to run the redundant fixed effect test in the uh, window of fixed effect output click on view go to fixed random effects testing and the first test is a redundant fixed effect likelihood ratio click here you will see the output cross section f statistic is 1.412241 and its probability value is 0 0.000 so as p value is 0 0.000 therefore we shall reject the null hypothesis of redundant fixed effect test now how we shall interpret this output let me take you back to the uh, powerpoint slides So to see the output of redundant fixed effect likelihood test, first of all, you should know what is the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis of this test is there is no fixed effect. And standard decision rule is that we reject the null hypothesis if p-value is less than level of significance. Now interpretation. As p-value in our e-views output was 0, 0.000, which is less than level of significance which we have set as 0 0.05 which you know that level of significance in social sciences is generally selected 1% 5% or 10% so still comparing it with the level of significance of 5% we reject the null hypothesis of no fixed effect and conclude that fixed effect are there so basically when we reject this null hypothesis that there is no fixed effect it means that we are saying that there is fixed effect and if there is fixed effect, then obviously fixed effect model is better. So brief, in brief, if the p-value of redundant fixed effect likelihood test is less than 0 0.05, it means that fixed effect model is better than the common effect model. 
and now we uh, shall see the random effect model and we will try to measure whether the random effect model is better or fixed effect model is better so let's uh, discuss about random effects estimation the fixed effect model assumes that each group has a non stochastic group specific component to y including dummy variable is a way of controlling for unobservable effects but these unobservable effects may be stochastic that is random so dependent variable yit is equal to intercept plus slope into independent variable plus vi plus epsilon it here this vi is treated as component of random error term vi is the element of the error which varies between groups but not within the groups while epsilon it is the element of error which varies over group as well as over time now uh, let's go to the e views and run the, uh, random effect model uh, this was our window we shall click on the estimate again here and this is our basic equation where return is dependent variable c for intercept and beta is our independent variable click on the panel option here we shall from this uh, option effect specification we shall select here a random but we shall select here none please remember that e views will allow you to run a random effect either along the cross sectional unit and none across the period or none across the cross sectional unit and random across the period it will not let you to run the random effect model across the cross sectional unit as well as across the period at the same time therefore i am selecting a random from the cross section effect and none from the period effect now i shall click okay to see the output of random effect model uh, see here in random effect model our dependent variable is return and independent variable is beta t statistic of intercept as well as slope are less than 2 which means that this is both of these are insignificant mark now a uh, very important uh, test is the hasman test hasman test decides between fixed effect model and a random effect model so let's go to the uh, view fix random effect testing and then correlated random effect hasman test when we click on the hasman test we see that our output is this one their cross section chi square statistic is 12.63 while p value is 0.004 now we shall go to the powerpoint slide to have the interpretation of hasman test so the hasman test test the statistical significance of difference between coefficient estimates obtained by fixed effect and random effect under the null hypothesis that random effect estimates are efficient so the null hypothesis of hasman test is that random effect estimates are efficient and the cn rule is same that we reject h not in null hypothesis if p value is less than level of significance what we conclude in we uh, run this ran this test applied this test in eviews and we found the value of p value of hasman test was 0.004 which is less than 0.05 therefore we have rejected the null hypothesis of hasman test and we shall conclude that fixed effect model is better than the random effect model now let me summarize it again Uh, we discuss three models of panel data common effect model fixed effect model and random effect model between common effect model and fixed effect model redundant fixed effect likelihood test decides if p value is less than 0.05 we conclude that fixed effect model is better than common effect model then we decide which model is better between fixed effect model and random effect model the deciding test is hasman test However, Hasman test is run after the random effect model. If the p-value of Hasman test is less than 0.05, we conclude that fixed effect model is better. So, in our this example, finally, after running all these five tests, we conclude that 
fixed effect model is better than both the common effect model and random effect model. 